Licensing is probably one of the most underrated and underused ways where you can get, make seriously good money in the music industry. So today I want to make a video thanks to a request from a friend where I'm going to walk you through exactly the steps that you need to take to increase your odds of getting your song um, synced. Uh, and then I'll also give you some tips to increase the, those odds even more. So first, before we get into anything, what is sync licensing? Sync licensing is when you tie audio, usually a song in this in this context, to any sort of visual medium. So the mainstream definition of sync licensing is getting songs on TV and, and movies, but sync licensing can you know be anything from advertisements to music in airport security to a million different things um, where you just pair audio to um, any sort of visual medium and you get paid for it. Uh, it's one of the best ways for producers, musicians who are um, less popular to get some get some serious money or some really good money um, with songs they already have. So I'm going to walk you through the steps uh, that you need to take in order to get your song synced to um, any sort of visual medium. Number one, the first thing you need to do is understand who you're trying to reach, okay? It, it's no use trying to get your song licensed if you don't even understand who you're trying to reach, who you're trying to contact and pitch um, your songs to. The person you're trying to, to reach is someone called the music supervisor or sound supervisor of a project. Every single project that has a visual and sonic element to it is going to have a music or sound supervisor. This is the person that picks all the songs, all the artists, who has to clear all the rights, and is basically the head chief when it comes to anything related to audio. This is the person you're trying to reach. There's a myriad of different ways to reach them. I'm going to walk you through the most, the, through the easiest way, uh, and I'm also going to give you some tips on how you could maybe jump the queue and, and contact people directly. So that's the first step, is understanding you're trying to reach the music supervisor. The second step is make sure you pick a song that has extremely high production quality. If you think of all the songs you've ever heard ever that are on TV, movies, advertisements, it's not a bedroom produced song, okay? And if it is, the mixing quality and the mastering quality is top level competitive. So if you have a good song that you're confident in, either mix it and master it at the best of your abilities, or if you're not good enough or you don't know how, um, it's worth spending the money on getting a really good engineer to do all these things for you, to get it sounding as professional, as clean, as mainstream as possible. You want something that just sounds easy to digest by the masses, okay? You don't want something that's has like a grunge feel like like it, or like an indie feel. Even if those are the genres you're going for, the production quality has to be extremely high. It has to feel very professional and it's worth spending money getting someone to do it for you if you can't do it yourself. So that's step two, is get a song that is that has really high production quality. The third step, and this is the main and final step before I get into some tips, is you want to find somewhere to submit your music. If you're assigned to a publisher or label, that's where you're going to go. Um, if you're independent, there's um, some sites that you can consider that I'll, I'll tell you some now and you can do your own research. But your PRO, for example, your performance right organization, um, if you are signed up to one of those, which you should be signed up to one of those, can also help you with getting sync deals. So in the US, BMI and ASCAP can help you get sync deals in the US. In the UK, PRS can help you. But mainly, you can go to your publisher or your record label to get a sync deal. Um, they can help you, but you really kind of have to push them and, and let them know that this is something that you're really interested in. And it's not something that they can put on the back burner. Say, hey, you know, go to whoever you're in contact with in the, in the record label and say, hey, I really want to push this sync deal. If you're independent or you want to do this yourself, there's a bunch of music sites uh, that you can submit music to with the specific purpose of supervising, um, of going to the music supervisor and getting it um, synced. So some that I would recommend are Music Gateway, Music Vine, and Broad Jam. I'll leave the link to those three in the description. Check those out. It's free to join, I'm pretty sure. You can submit your music. And it and when you submit your music, what you want to do to increase the um, opportunity and the likelihood of you getting picked is you want to get something called metadata um, on point. The metadata is all the information about your song that could inform a music supervisor when they're going through these, these uh, lists on whether the song is right for them. So when you submit your song, just be honest and clear about what the song is. So if it's like a moody, relaxed kind of beat, for example, say you're a producer, say 
it's a moody, relaxed song this long in, in, in how many seconds and how many minutes. Um, put it in an MP3 file and just make sure all the metadata and all the information you can give is there because the easier it is to search for a song, the more likely it is to be picked. Okay? So make sure the metadata when you're submitting in these, in these um, websites is on point. Those are the main steps that you're going to take when you're submitting your music for sync. And now I'm going to give you some tips that are really going to help you and increase the, the odds of, of um, your song getting picked. The first tip is the most important one probably, which is that if you're a singer or you have vocals on your track, you want an instrumental version and a vocal version in the same place. You want to offer both an instrumental no vocals and the vocal version. Why? Because there's a million um, percent chance that the music supervisor is going to have a point in time where they're going to find it useful to have an only instrumental version. Maybe they want to have a reprise somewhere in the film where it's only the instrumental version. Maybe they just want to use the instrumental version while the characters are talking on screen. And if you don't offer that, then your song's not going to get picked and you're fucked. So find an instrumental version, take out the, vo take out the vocals and offer both when you're submitting the songs. Okay, that's tip number one. Number two is the type of the type of song that you market for sync is extremely important, okay? If you're an artist who has vocals and is trying to market their own solo career, there are certain songs that are single friendly, that are streaming friendly, that are not gonna do as well in sync, and vice versa, there are songs that are very sync friendly that are not gonna do very well in streaming. And that's not a problem. It means you have to leverage both to, to get the best out of both worlds. So what exactly makes a good song that, that is gonna be good for sync? Well, they want to be loop-based, emotional songs, okay? The, these are songs that have a very distinct feel to them that you can categorize. I know a lot of artists don't like being categorized. I know a lot of people like genre bending and, and not being put in categories. But when it comes to sync, categories are good. As, much, as many categories as you can get into, the better. So when you have um, a song that you want to sync, if it has a motif that is getting looped a lot, that is easy to identify and is easy to classify, it's a very good song for sync. Okay, if you think about it, most of these songs have to be in the background of things. They cannot be the protagonist of the of the scene. They're normally in the background while characters are talking or while something is going on visually. So if you have a song that, for example, say has a guitar loop that's um, very melancholic and sad and could do very well in an emotional scene, that's a good song that you could market in sync that maybe wouldn't do well in, in streaming. So that's the type of music that you want to be submitting to these places. Okay. The next thing I would recommend that you do is that you have both copyrights. You have the songwriting copyright and the recording copyright. And if you don't, I recommend you have as much of the rights as possible and that the rights are diluted between as few people as possible. Why? Because each time someone, uh, the music supervisor has to clear a song, they have to clear it with every single right holder. Now, this is different for covers because there's a, something called a compulsory mechanical license, which I'll talk about in a, in a different time. But essentially, they have to clear the rights with everyone involved in the song. This means that the less hassle you, you are and you create for the music supervisor, they're more likely they're actually going to stick with your song because you're making their life easier than maybe paying for a more popular song, but you have to clear a million different rights and they're all asking, they're all asking for like an arm and a leg in terms of price. So get as, many, as much of the copyright as you can. Both copyrights, the recording and the song will be ideal, but basically reduce the hassle for the music supervisor. This is really good for independent artists, small artists that are basically doing everything by themselves because you already own the entire copyright. So you're basically the only person the music supervisor has to go through to get the song cleared. And that's going to just propel you to the top of the list when people are looking for things to, to, um, to use in their, in their visual medium. So the less rights being split, the better. Now, the final tip, and this is one is one I really want, want you to pay attention to because it could work out very well if you're professional about it and if you're clever about it. And this is how you can contact music supervisors personally. Okay, I'm going to show you step by step how you can find the contacts of music supervisors, how you can, how you can contact them personally and, ba and be like, hey, uh, I know you're a music supervisor. Consider my music for this TV show or this, um, these movies. This can be a very useful technique, but if you fuck around and if you're unprofessional and if you're not friendly and understand that these people are human beings, it could get you blackballed from the music music industry or at least from the social circles of this music supervisor. So let's walk it through. 
Um, and remember, you don't want to be a dick with these things, okay? So you can contact music supervisors personally, and what you can do is go on imdb.com, and that's the um, site where you have all the information on movies and TV shows. And if you go to imdb.com and you go to cast or people involved, and there's going to be a link where you can go and find the whole cast and people involved behind the scenes as well, there's going to be an, um, a category always called sound category or music supervision or um, you know audio department or one of these one of these um, sort of buzzwords or keywords and in there you can find someone who's going to be tasked with being the music supervisor that's going to be their official role it's going to be music supervisor sound supervisor head of music head of audio these are the people that are basically in charge as we talked about in the beginning they're in charge of getting the songs on the tv show so what you can do is find their full name and then go on, on LinkedIn. Not enough musicians are using LinkedIn. It's not a cool social media app. It's not like Instagram or TikTok where it's about clout or whatever. But you can find amazing people in the music industry who have a lot of power and a lot of reach in LinkedIn. So you go to LinkedIn, you type in their full name and you find it. And it's going to be like, oh, they're working on such and such TV show in, in LinkedIn. Or they're a music supervisor working for Warner or whatever it is. Uh, or whatever you know tv show company so once you get them on linkedin you can send them a private message uh, and you can say hey i'm an artist and i know you're working on such and such project consider this song for you know the tv show remind them that they don't have to clear that many rights say you're the single rights owner um, to make their life easier and just be as professional as you can about it this won't always work. Um, these people are very busy. They might have other artists trying the same technique. But it is going to jump you the, uh, to the front of the queue because not a lot of people are using LinkedIn. Not a, people, not a lot of people are private messaging um, these things. So that's my final tip for basically how to get your music synced. I would also advise you to keep trying. Okay, it's not going to work the first time, but this doesn't have any sort of social relevancy. People don't know when you're trying to sync music. It's not a publicly available knowledge. It's just something that happens behind the scenes. So if you fail, just keep trying. No one will know that you failed a hundred times before you land one sync. And it can be life-changing to land a sync deal. You know, I don't know how many artists have blown up because their music has been on a TV show. So I would recommend you just keep trying. Every time you've got new music, literally just try and get it synced. You're not losing anything by trying. And if you do get something synced, first of all, well done. Second of all, market the ever-loving shit out of the fact that you got a sync deal. If you get on a high-profile TV show, high-profile movie, go on social media and let everyone and their mother know that you just got this song on this TV show because it can change your career drastically drastically so don't play it off like oh cool you know i don't want to talk too much about it for the love of christ let everyone know that you got a sync deal okay the second that that episode airs and your music is there ram it in people's throats you'll get so many fans from that tv show changing over to your music you're gonna it's gonna change your career if you get a high profile tv show but even if it's not how pro high profile slow and steady wins the race so whatever win you get broadcast the win always broadcast your wins because you can get so many fans anyways there you go